This paper, uh, Jim Richardson and I explore some critical developments in the wake of the 2008 Texas State Raid on the Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints in El Dorado. Uh, if you've received your uh, recent, most recent issue of uh, Novo Religio, uh, a more uh, detailed uh, uh, account of this uh, is there for your reading. Um, Jim Richardson and I published a, uh, a book on uh, the raid, an edited volume in 2011. Uh, I saw co copies out in the, in the foyer if you uh, are interested. Um, to our knowledge, that is the most comprehensive and, and maybe the only academic uh, or scholarly uh, examination of this raid that is available. For those of you who have not read the book or are not familiar with the raid, let me give you a brief uh, synopsis. The raid occurred on April 3rd, 2008. As a joint task force of five Texas state and county law enforcement agencies accompanied by the Department of Family and Protective Services raided the Fundamentalist Church uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is a Mormon polygamous sect near the small town of El Dorado, about 30 miles from San Angelo. The earning for Zion Ranch was home to 800 members of the FLDS. Authorities claimed they had evidence of widespread pattern of practice of child sexual abuse and underage marriage. The massive raid involving a force of over 100 law enforcement agents was triggered by phone calls to the Newbridge Family Shelter Hotline in San Angelo, Texas on March 29th and March 30th of that year. The calls were made allegedly from a 16-year-old girl inside the YFZ community who alleged she was raped and beaten by her 49-year-old spiritual husband. The young girl identified herself as Sarah Jessup and claimed to be the seventh wife of a man she identified as Dale Barlow. According to court documents, she told volunteers at the family shelter that her husband choked her, hit her in the chest, and forced himself on her sexually. One of the beatings was so severe that she was left with broken ribs and she had to be taken to the hospital. Sarah said she was forced to marry at 15 years of age, had an eight-month-old infant, and was several weeks pregnant at the time of the phone calls. The frantic young mother said she was not allowed to leave the Yearning for Zion Ranch by herself. She re requested uh, help from the domestic violence shelter and from child protection officials uh, to escape the ranch and flee the abusive relationship. Four days later, the Texas State Raid was launched to rescue Sarah, arrest Daryl Barlow, collect evidence of child sexual abuse uh, against the accused. But after a, an extensive two-day search of the F YFZ ranch, the Department of Family and Protective Services could not locate or find uh, the young girl, or the alleged perpetrator, Dale Barlow. As it turns out, uh, the phone calls were hoax calls placed by a 33-year-old 33 uh, mentally unstable woman named Rosita Swinton from Colorado Springs. Um, uh, Miss Swinton had been, uh, uh, we have documented at least 10 cases previously where she had made false reports to, uh, to police. Uh, one of the questions we raise in the book is, is why Texas authorities didn't bother to trace these phone calls, seeing that they were coming out of state and not coming from El Dorado. Despite the failure to find any of these uh, parties to the putative crime, child protection officials took 439 FLDS children into state custody. It was the largest state custodial detention of children in U.S. history. I might add here, add here too, if. Uh, if you've noticed, I'm sure you have, uh, the militarized nature of this, of this raid, uh, that went virtually unreported in the media. Um, and the only reason that we have documentation of this is because some of these young girls out at the YFZ ranch had camera phones, right? And they were taking pictures. Now, they may be living in the, in the 19th century, but they all seem to have cell phones with cameras on them. And we got these pictures uh, uh, from them, sort of furtively, actually. Uh, we, we believe if the authorities had uh, gotten a hold of them, you wouldn't be seeing even these photos. Officials defended the action, asserting that all the FLDS children were at risk of child abuse. This assertion would prove to be legally problematic for state officials, but the raid 
on the community and seizure of materials did produce evidence of underage marriage. 11 FLDS men were later charged with sexual assault of a minor and other related charges. FLDS parents seized, of the seized children filed an appeal to the district court's ruling giving protective custody uh, to the Department of Family and Protective Services. The appeal was made to the Texas Court of Appeals in the third district in Austin and on May 22nd, the appellate court found that the district court erred and that the Texas authorities did not carry its burden of proof required by law. The court ruled that the state would have to hold hearings for each of the 439 children to determine if their physical health or safety was in danger. Uh, the department uh, appealed to the Supreme Court, but to no avail, the Supreme Court, Texas Supreme Court held that the removal of the children was unwarranted was unwarranted and ordered the children returned to their parents. The criminal trials of 11 FLDS men began in November 2009 in Schleicher County. The trials were conducted uh, consecutively and covered a period of two years and four months. Nine of the men were convicted of sexual assault, one pled guilty to two uh, excuse me, three counts of bigamy, and one was convicted of performing an unlawful marriage of his 12-year-old daughter. With the exception of the leader, Warren Jeffs, the other men received sentences ranging from 7 to 75 years. Jeffs was convicted on two counts of sexual assault and given a sentence of life plus 20 years. So these are the major developments that have occurred since the raid. The criminal trial and uh, uh, convictions of the, of the uh, 11 FLDS men, and the media continues to report that there are 12 of men that were convicted. I can't find a 12th man, so um, uh, I've looked this over pretty carefully. I'm pretty sure it's 11. They're just repeating uh, a number that they reported earlier. Table two here, I think, is revealing uh, simply because it shows the age of the victim and the year the assault took place. The FLDS likely made its decision to locate the satellite community in Texas in 2003 because Texas had a lax age of marriage law. Uh, it was 14 with parental consent. It had, had been virtually unchanged since the founding of the state in 1835. Um, when Warren Jeffs took over as the leader, uh, he began to revert to earlier practices of, of underage marriage. Uh, and that had all but disappeared before his uh, assumption of leadership. As the word got out that the FLDS had established a community in El Dorado, the Texas state legislature, uh, legislator from that county introduced a bill in Austin that raised the legal age of marriage to 16. Testimony in the trial of Jeffs revealed that after taking over leadership in 2002, he instituted new practices and policies designed to solidify his power and authority. He amalgamated uh, church finances and ordered business owners to surrender their ownership. And he excommunicated long-term community leaders Dan Barlow and Louis Barlow. He also excommunicated 20 other men who challenged his new rules and practices, seizing their property and assigning their wives and children to men loyal to him. His actions led to a power struggle with another prominent leader, Winston Blackmore, bishop of the FLDS community in Bountiful, British Columbia. Jeffs expelled Blackmore, leading to a mass exodus of about 700 FLDS members who followed uh, the bishop in BC. Jeffs has reacted to his incarceration with defiance, attempting to maintain and even expand control over the FLDS community. He sent a barrage of letters to the uh, community making extraordinary demands. He issued warnings of apocalyptic doom for the United States in the form of earthquakes, tidal waves, firestorms, and an assortment of natural disasters if he's not released from prison. He also authored a 248-page proclamation of his dire prophecies and mail copies to major news outlets around the country. As I said earlier, one of Jeff's uh, policy shifts was the return to marriage of underage girls. In the years leading up to his presidency, 
the age of marriage for FLDS women had been rising, it had been increasing. Martha Bradley, in her book, um, was published in the early 90s, reports that uh, the average marriage age of, uh, of the women uh, had reached 19, and more uh, women expressed an interest in obtaining education, higher education, or professional training outside the community. Jeffs, when he assumed control, reversed this trend by promoting underage marriages again. And in June 2005, he was charged in Utah with sexual assault of a minor in conspiracy to commit sexual misconduct with a minor for allegedly arranging a marriage between a 14-year-old girl and a 19-year-old first cousin. Uh, we sometimes think that the raid was, was launched in Texas to uh, go after Jeffs, but Jeffs was in custody in Utah at the time of the 2008 raid. He was later extradited to Texas to face charges. When Jeffs was incarcerated in 2007, he reportedly told his brother Nephi that he was, quote, never called to be the FLDS prophet, end quote. In November 2007, in the Washington County Attorney's Office released a video of conversations between Warren and Nephi in which the former renounced his leadership position in the church and admitted to immoral actions with a sister and a daughter. Records from the Attorney's Office also show Jeffs tried to commit suicide while he was in prison. In an email to the Salt Lake City-based Desiree News, Jeffs officially resigned as FLDS president. His fluctuating claims may be attributed to an apparent nervous breakdown in the days leading up to the Utah trial. By the time of the 2011 trial in Texas, he was reasserting his pro uh, prophetic claims. Disturbing news of just abuse of young women has left some FLDS members disillusioned and the community in disarray. Some have left voluntarily, some have refused to comply with Jeff's edicts and have been expelled. Jeff's attempted uh, to conduct a purge of doubters and set a deadline of December 31st, 2011 for his followers to, quote, demonstrate their righteousness. And an estimated 1,500 members failed to meet the stringent requirements imposed by Jeff's. In April 2011, former FLDS church bishop uh, Church Bishop William E. Jessup organized a group of ex-members to form a schismatic group in Hilldale. Jessup describes himself as the acting bishop. He claims that in 2002, a dying rule on Jeffs, Warren's father, made him an apostle, and in 2007, when Jeffs was having a crisis, he apparently abdicated his role as the prophet. Jessup claims that Jeffs told him he was the new key holder. But now Jeffs has told FLDS members that when they, they, will be ex, they will be expelled if they attend Jessup's services. Jessup has an estimated uh, 1,000 followers in, uh, in Hildale right now, and they appear to be growing. They meet in the Tom Holmes School House on the Colorado City property. Here's a photo of William E. Jessup, who we see as a possible uh, emerging prophet in the absence of, of uh, Warren Jeffs. The prison term that Jeffs received, uh, life plus 20 years, means virtually he will never get out. He's permanently sequestered, um, which obviously creates uh, a, a problem for the leadership in the community. William E. Jessup has said in his group, there will be no pressure on women to marry or to have marriages arranged. If teens want to marry, they will be encouraged to consider the implications. He told the Salt Lake Tribune, we'll encourage girls, this is a quote, we'll encourage girls to be of age and learn the qualities of life and enjoy life and not get into something they will regret, end quote. He also announced that women will be free to work outside the home. Children will be encouraged to earn high school and college degrees. And though relatively small, Jessup's group appear, appears to oppose a serious challenge to Jeff's authority. On April 17, 2014, the Department of Public Safety uh, agents took possession of the YFZ property near El Dorado. The DPS said only eight adults were still living on the ranch. The remaining FLDS residents agreed to leave after the meeting with the agents. 
The state asked the judge to allow forfeiture of the property, alleging that the FLDS leaders financed the purchase of the land in 2003 through money laundering. It also cited sexual assaults committed on the property. And so the judge granted uh, the state's request in January of this year. According to tax records, the YFZ property was valued at $33 million. The FLDS, interestingly enough, did not contest this uh, uh, forfeiture, possibly because it has exhausted legal funds defending members in criminal trials. We're not really sure. Uh, much of the contact that we had prior to the Jeff's trial was kind of cut off, and some of our contacts have not uh, been forthcoming in, in uh, getting back to us on uh, requests for information. As Warren Jeffs uh, continues uh, his attempt to rule the FLDS church from prison, it remains to be seen how this will play out among members over time. Will, will uh, William Jessup uh, emerge uh, as the recognized prophet and leader of the FLDS? Will new factions emerge led by Another claiming the mantle of leadership, and there are a few others. Perhaps those who now administer the day-to-day -day FLDS church operations, such as Lyle Jeffs, uh, Warren's brother, younger brother, will become de facto leaders with their own authority. It does seem probable that Jeff's uh, permanent sequestration will empower some FLDS members to accept or even press for new leadership. Uh, this. Uh, this whole process is in flux, and so we continue to, to monitor it to see what directions this very important uh, new religious movement will take in the future. Thank you.